ready to unlock the full potential of Windows 11. Today, we're diving into 7 advanced Windows 11 features that'll elevate your user experience. From productivity hacks to customization tricks, explore 13 hidden Windows 11 features for an enhanced PC experience. From Windows God Mode to managing processes and network diagnostics, unlock productivity hacks and customization tricks to optimize your computing journey. Let's jump right in. Number 1. Windows God Mode. This is essentially a hidden menu or folder. To access it, simply create a new folder anywhere, and rename it with a specific code, which I'll provide in the description below. Although, God Mode, is a common term for this, you can name it whatever you like as long as the code remains the same. After renaming and hitting Enter, the folder's name will disappear, but it'll still be accessible. Hovering over it reveals a description indicating it's a compilation of various program tasks. This special folder essentially provides shortcuts to numerous Windows settings and tools in one centralized location. It's worth noting that everything within this folder can also be accessed through other means in Windows. In the Start menu, many of these items can't be found through a simple search. Additionally, when using the Start menu search, you need to have a specific query in mind. You can sift through various hidden menus and possibly uncover settings you weren't aware of previously. There's a wide array of categories available, including administrative tools, devices, printers, security, and maintenance. Now you have the opportunity to explore its contents and discover what lies within. Number 2. Services Menu if you're familiar with the task manager, you've likely encountered processes, which are essentially running programs displayed in a list. These processes are applications that interact with the desktop. This is distinct from what's commonly referred to as background processes, which typically involve applications running in minimized windows. Services, on the other hand, operate entirely in the background of the operating system, without any user interface. You can access a dedicated menu for services by typing services.msc into the Start Menu search bar and pressing Enter. When browsing through this menu, you'll likely encounter numerous items, many of which may be unfamiliar to you. So, if you have a program that inexplicably launches with Windows, and it doesn't appear in the Startup menu of the Task Manager, it could be due to a corresponding service. In such cases, you can locate the program's name and check if its startup type is set to automatic. If it is, it means the program will start automatically with Windows. You can alter this by right-clicking, selecting, Properties, and changing the startup type from automatic to manual. This ensures the program won't run unless initiated manually by the user. While it's beneficial to be aware of this menu, it's advisable not to tinker with settings unless you understand their function. Therefore, only disable services that you're certain are specifically tied to a particular program and that you don't want starting up. Number 3. msconfig. You can access this by searching msconfig in the Start menu. This brings up the System Configuration menu. Generally, you should exercise caution when adjusting settings within the entire msconfig menu, as it contains critical configurations, particularly concerning boot processes. For instance, enabling safe mode can be particularly useful. Safe mode essentially prevents the loading of any third-party or non-essential drivers and software during Windows startup. This can be beneficial if you're dealing with a virus, as it prevents the virus from launching along with Windows. Within safe mode, there are several sub-options to consider. Minimal essentially starts up with the bare essentials, while alternative shell is similar but includes a command prompt. Network may be preferred as it allows access to the internet and network devices, this is unlike minimal, which lacks network connectivity. Additionally, there are other options available, not exclusive to safe mode. For instance, no GUI boot hides the Windows logo during startup. Boot log generates a text file in the Windows folder, useful for diagnosing startup issues. Base Video forces Windows to load graphics in basic VGA settings, which can be helpful for troubleshooting display or graphics card problems. Lastly, OS Boot Information displays driver names as they load during startup, aiding in identifying any issues. 
Pairing that with the boot log, for instance, would provide even more detailed information. However, it's important to emphasize that these are not settings you should be altering at the moment. This knowledge is primarily for future reference, should you encounter issues where these settings could prove useful. You can assess their relevance and applicability at that time. If you do decide to make changes, it's advisable to ensure that the option to make all boot settings permanent is unchecked. Number 4. Startup Folder What you might not be aware of is that every user in Windows possesses a designated startup folder where you can place shortcuts to programs, scripts, or bash commands. Anything within this folder will automatically run upon startup. Navigating to this folder is relatively straightforward. One convenient method is to press the Windows key and R simultaneously to open the run box, then type shell colon startup and hit enter. This action will instantly direct you to the startup folder. Alternatively, you can locate the folder's full path, typically residing within app data, roaming a Microsoft Windows start menu programs a startup. Although it may seem buried within the system, the shell colon startup command provides direct access. Moreover, it's worth noting that the user startup folder isn't limited to shortcuts, you can also place scripts and other executable commands here for automatic execution upon startup. Number 5. IP config. Simply open the command prompt and type IP protocol configuration to retrieve various useful information about your network adapters. This includes your local IP address, public IP address, and IP address configuration for. There's a wealth of information provided, including details about your network adapters, such as your local IP address, public IP address, and configuration for both IPv4 and IPv6. If you ever need to connect one computer to another, knowing the local IP is crucial, and IP protocol configuration is likely the command you'd rely on for this purpose. For instance, if you're unsure whether you can connect to the internet, you can ping google.com to verify accessibility. If the ping receives a response, you know the web page is reachable from the command prompt, which can help pinpoint issues if, for example, Chrome isn't loading the page. Similarly, if you're attempting to access another computer on your local network, you can try pinging the device using its local IP obtained from IP protocol configuration to determine accessibility. This can assist in diagnosing potential network problems. You might need to explore potential uses for these features in the future, as most users may never find them necessary. Number 6. Device Manager. This is the Device Manager, which provides a comprehensive view of all devices connected to the computer and offers access to various information about them, including drivers and driver versions. However, navigating this tool isn't particularly straightforward, and the names assigned to devices may not always be intuitive. For instance, a USB drive might be labeled as something like USB composite device, rather than USB drive, making identification challenging amidst a multitude of similarly named devices. When trying to identify a specific device, you might need to resort to trial and error, unplugging and replugging devices to see which one appears. Additionally, the device manager displays a range of other information, such as processors, network devices, graphics cards, and monitors. While this tool may seem irrelevant for many users, it can prove beneficial in certain scenarios. For instance, if you're experiencing issues with a connected device not functioning correctly, you can locate the device in the device manager and attempt to update its drivers either automatically through Windows or by downloading drivers from the manufacturer's website. Manual driver installation typically requires using the device manager. Number 7. Disk Management Menu This tool essentially enables you to manage disk partitions, format disks, and perform other disk-related operations. However, it's crucial to exercise caution while navigating this menu because making a mistake, such as accidentally deleting a partition, could result in the loss of your entire drive, including your Windows installation. Nevertheless, this menu can be incredibly useful in certain situations. For instance, if you've installed a new hard drive in your computer and it doesn't appear in Windows Explorer, it may be because the drive hasn't been formatted. 
In such cases, accessing disk management allows you to identify the unallocated drive space and create a new partition, format it, and make it usable. Additionally, disk management is where you can modify device configurations. In disk management, you can manage drive letters, which can sometimes resolve the issue where a drive appears in Disk Manager but not in Windows Explorer. Thanks for tuning in to explore these advanced features in Windows 11. I hope you found the insights valuable and that they'll enhance your computing experience. Don't forget to subscribe for more tech tips and tutorials. Until next time, 